It is 2024, and that means the Land 6 Helix is about to turn nine years old later this year. With all of the other modelers out there, I think it's reasonable to ask, is the Line 6 Helix still relevant in 2024? I should also mention that I'm bringing this video to you in collaboration with Yamaha slash Line 6, and I get to keep this very Helix unit as a compensation for the three videos I've created for them. However, all of the arguments I make here in this video are purely my own. But before we start arguing whether the Helix is still relevant or not, let's take a listen to a silly song I wrote a few years ago, and all the guitar tracks have been reamped through this very Line 6 Helix. The Line 6 Helix was originally introduced in 2015, and if you want to know how long ago that was, here's an actual photo of me hanging out with my uncles in the New York City. With new modelers being released what seems to be every week now, it's kind of easy to take Helix and just label it as an old tech. And sure, there might be a few ports on the back of the unit that kind of dated a little bit, especially as we transition to USB-C. But to properly answer the question whether the Helix is still relevant in 2024, I thought we need to go through different categories and compare the Helix to what's out there using those categories. The four categories I chose for this comparison were first of all sounds, then user interface and hardware, support and community, and then future proofness if that's even a word. Let's get started with the comparison by starting with the category that probably causes the most debate, and I'm going to throw more fuel to the fire by saying that I don't think that actually matters as much as you think. I think we've reached the point in the guitar amp modeling where it's incredibly difficult to distinguish a real amp from a digital modeling unit or a plugin, for example. And I also think it's good to remember that besides other guitar players, nobody really cares how you actually achieve your sounds as long as they're good. And with that rant out of the way, does the Helix sound good compared to the other modelers? Yes. And there's also so much to choose from. As of shooting this video, the Line 6 Helix comes with over 100 amps slash amp versions. And with the 3.5 update, they addressed the only thing that you heard me complain about with the Helix units, and those were the stock cabinets. The new IR engine is great. And with a lot of sounds I'm creating now, I don't feel the need to use third-party IRs anymore. Also, the artist created presets are a lot of fun as well, and they also demonstrate you what kind of crazy setups you can create with this thing. The Helix also has one of the biggest arrays of great sounding effects for any kind of music style. A friend of mine plays in a band called Pendulum, and he uses Helix units successfully for drum and bass type of stuff in a wet, dry, wet configuration. And having checked their band live, it sounded awesome. The selection of the effects and ability to route them in many ways has also made the Helix incredibly popular among the guitarists in the worship scene. One thing that the Helix doesn't do is capture sounds of pedals or amplifiers, but I feel the whole tone matching thing that a lot of companies and YouTubers do kind of gives you exactly the same results, just in a different way. I think over its almost 9 year long history, the Helix has proven to be a great option both for studio and live use, and it's still comparable tone-wise to the modelers on the market. And to put all of this kind of bluntly, if you're not getting great tones out of your Helix, that's on you, not the gear.
This is where personal preference is vary a lot. Some of you like to use knobs to tweak your sounds. Some want to have touch screens to tweak the graphic EQ, for example. And I don't think there's right or wrong here, but there's definitely good and bad interface design. Luckily, the days of Zoom 505, for example, are behind us, and most of the devices come with good to great user interface design. It's just what you like. When it comes to Helix, these scribble strips over here, these six knobs that are also clickable, this button over here that also acts as a joystick, make the user experience smooth and kind of effortless. But as with all other digital units complex as this one, there's a little bit of learning curve before tweaking all the sounds becomes second nature. Hardware-wise, the Helix still looks kind of futuristic and modern, which is a testament to great hardware design. I can't really say anything about the long time durability of the unit though because I've had mine only for a few weeks now, but I haven't really heard any major complaints from my friends who have been using their Helixes for many years. One thing that really sets the Helix range of products apart from any other manufacturer out there is the fact that the Helix range has kind of identical sounds no matter what unit you go for, but you can get so many different versions of that because you can get the big Helix, you can get the Helix LT, you can get the whole thing as a plugin, so Helix Native. Then there's the HX Stomp, HX Stomp XL, there's HX Effects, there's the Pod Go, and HX One as well. Maybe I even forgot one. Pretty much no matter what kind of setup you're building, they got you covered. No other modeling company can get even close to what they have. I know I'm not the only one saying this, but I don't enjoy being on social media that much nowadays. There are a few exceptions though, because the Line 6 user group on Facebook is great. The vibes there are fantastic, and many times I've gotten a helpful response there in just mere minutes. There's also a huge amount of free stuff available for the Helix users with free patches, impulse responses, or even like full live rig setups. And no matter what kind of music style you're playing, there's probably free stuff available for your genre as well. And if you're a touring musician and your Helix goes down, the Yamaha Corporation products are available almost anywhere in the world. To answer this question, I decided to dive into the depths of Reddit and see what people are speculating. And one thing that stood out to me was that a lot of people want to have more power because why not? I also saw a lot of discussion about maybe being able to use your Helix with some sort of smart device or tweak the sounds at least or like a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection. And some people also were hoping for some sort of capture feature as a bunch of other devices do nowadays. And something that I took from those discussion is that I'm not sure these are the things that would make people sell their Helixes and get the Helix 2 instead though. Line 6 got a lot of things right with the original Helix and they've improved it vastly with software updates as well and I don't think they're done just yet. And even if the Helix 2 would come out let's say next year, so at the 10th year mark of the original Helix, I don't think they will stop updating the existing Helixes because it's probably tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of users around the world that are happy with the Helixes they're getting the sounds and I just don't think they've reached the full potential of the original design. And overall, I feel we're entering a new era of modeling where modelers can actually be seen as a decent long time investment because a lot of the things that have been released many, many years ago are still going strong, still getting better with the updates. And it's gotten to the point where you kind of get something good right away, but it gets even better as the time passes. And I think that kind of thing is better for the environment, it's better for our wallets as well. And maybe this is the new future where modelers can be seen as a decent longer time investment at least. So at the span of like five to 10 years, for example. Or oh, that's my utopian dream at least. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a comment down below, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, all the things you need to do here on YouTube and if you got any questions be sure to ask those in the comments as well and there's a way to support what I do in the description. Thank you so much for watching, I shall see you next time!